this is uh, Physics Lab 5, and this is a video of something called the Frosbury or the Fosbury Flop. Um, it's Dick Fosbury's Olympic medal winning high jump in the 1968 uh, Summer Olympics. And so why this is cool is because it actually shows a really relevant real-world application of the uh, sort of real system versus point particle system that we've been talking about recently. Um, so, I want to show you sort of why this is cool. So, in high jump, as you can see, there's like, there's a bar, and a person jumps over it. So, before Fosbury did his thing and sort of changed the way it was done, people would do this thing called the scissor jump, where their whole body, at one point or another, would sort of look something like that, and uh, they'd be all the way above this bar. So if you found the center of mass of their body, it would be, like, there-ish, you know, where their belly button is. Um, and the ground is down here, and so their center of mass is, you know, this far above the ground. But the Fosbury flop does something a little different. If you've got that same thing, instead of doing that, he has maybe a leg, his legs back there, his body, sort of his torso coming over here, arms here, and then head here again. And this looks sort of like, you know, a letter like C or an arch. And the center of mass of an arch isn't anywhere on the arch. It's actually like down here somewhere. So his center of mass is down here. And you'll notice that he's jumping the same height, but his center of mass is much lower. There's this sort of difference in distance of, you know, some amount. Um, and that's really cool, because if we actually look at the underlying physics, uh, if we say that this is a closed system, and we assume that uh, the change in kinetic energy is zero, so delta Ke is zero, or delta E is zero, I guess I should say, um, then you can say that uh, the initial energy, which is one-half mv squared, because it's all kinetic, because he's jumping up, we're only looking at the vertical direction, is equal to the final energy, which is uh, mgh, because it's all gravitational potential. So we can cancel that, and we get that v squared equals 2mg, or 2gh, sorry. Um, and so what that means is that since he's go since and this is all dealing with the point particle system, so this is all dealing with his center of mass, not like how his body contorts around the bar. Uh, which does take energy, it just takes a lot less energy to, like, move your body instead of raise it up. In, in, like, it's a lot easier to move your hand than levitate, I think, is the easy way of putting it. Um, and so, by doing this, and by lowering the height that he has to propel his body, he lowers the height, or he lowers the velocity with which he needs to take off, or conversely, if he runs and jumps with the same velocity, he can get a lot higher. And so the, uh, the, the question to ask would be, how much higher? And the answer is, it depends entirely on the person. You can't really, like, quantify uh, that experimentally because, you know, Nick Fosbury is like 6'4 or something, whereas a shorter high jump, uh, high jumper wouldn't be able to get the same amount of success or wouldn't be able to go as high because, um, how, how, like, much you'll be able to arch your back is a, you know, it depends on how flexible you are, it depends on how tall you are, it depends on, uh, you know, all sorts of these things that you can't really call into account. So instead, uh, I did something a little different and I said, okay, let's sort of look at, um, how different velocities will affect this jump in terms of how high they go. And um, so this is this is the code used to do that. Uh, essentially, you make some stuff appear on the screen. Uh, these guys are both going to be the same size, and they start with different initial velocities, so they're both going to be moving forward, essentially, but then they move up at different speeds. So they're jumping, one's jumping harder than the other. Um, and then, so they will accelerate, and then they will move based on their acceleration. Um, so their velocities change and then their positions change uh, based on Newton's second law.
Um, and what happens when you see this is that the uh, yellow one, which is the, the sort of Fosbury flop version, uh, it goes a lot lower. The assumption being that, you know, he's actually at the top of his jump arced sort of like that, or like, you know, he's going like that over the top, so that uh, when he, when the center of mass doesn't jump over the bar, um, his body actually does. And that's really cool. And I think that's just this really amazing sort of real-life application. You know, the point-particle system, you're missing out on this huge and important um, piece of information, which is how the jumper's body is contorted, and that can be, in some cases, more important than speed alone.